Did you just hit record? Yeah. <laughs> I hope so. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back for the first time to the Good Trouble Podcast. Second or third time, honestly. Second or third time. <laughs> they don't gotta know. They don't know. They don't have to know all that. You didn't have to We're know. just having a good time. We're having a great time. Oh my god. Okay, so let's just dive into the. Well, I was looking at my anal- an analytics for the show earlier, and first of all, shout out, we hit 51 subscribers at time of recording. Thank you. Thank y'all so much. We appreciate it. Like, we always, we knew that we were going to hopefully grow at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 50, I know 50 is real. Oh my God, 50 subscribers. Like, I get more likes on my Instagram posts. Whatever, man. I, you know, you do you. Congratulations. Congrats. Good job. But 51 subscribers is a big deal. We're halfway to our first milestone, which is 100 subscribers, which is crazy because it's like, we're, all, we're on the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as we're not, like, plateauing or stalling or anything yeah. like that, I think that's great. No, keep sharing, keep liking, keep subscribing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're sipping on some prime energy today. Shout out Logan Paul, Mike, and George over there at the Impulsive Podcast. The Maverick. Yo, there's a whole 200 milligrams of caffeine in this bad boy. Mm. I am not going to bed tonight. Sleep is for the week. But dang, it tastes good. Okay. It's, it's delicious. Like... I guess I'll have to sleep when I'm dead. Yeah. And there's only 10 calories, bro. Only 10 calories? Yo, this is... Hey, this is uh, this is delicious. And if it does the job of keeping me awake through the podcast, I will have another one for sure. So Hashtag drink prime. Hashtag <laughs> drink prime. Wow, I'm cheers it up. Cheers it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bang. These look like Red Bull cans. They kind of do. But as... Something with Prime, like they have like the the sports drink, and then they have now this is their most recent drop is the energy drink. Uh huh. But they, like, they have marketed and branded this so well. Like I can't yeah. like, and and a lot of people don't like Logan Paul, but like, how can you hate the guy? Like if he's he's just killing it, and people I think that's what it is. It's because he's yeah. killing it, and he's like, just on the up and up. Man's in WWE now. He's got a WrestleMania match this no, year. No, he's doing big things. Him and his brother, Jake. Yeah, yeah him and his brother. It's kind of crazy to kind of watch their story go from Vine stars yeah. to just exploding into every every aspect of social media. They're killing it. So. Literally. Um, and the fact that they're athletes is kind of cool. I know. And yeah. like, But they just like, they're just so multifaceted. All, both yeah. of them are. Yeah. But their brand is like, through the roof. Like, yeah. their branding skills, I guess, is, is insane to me because I literally just watched uh, Kevin Hart's show um, on YouTube yesterday, um, Cold as Balls podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what that is? Like, he, he had Logan Paul on there. Like, yeah. 10 hours ago, like, when I watched it, it was like 10 hours ago posted. So I just watched it and, and he was, Kevin was telling him the same thing. He's like, He's like, so, you know, you know, you don't really do that much. And he was like, what do you mean? He's like, you just box, you're in WWE, you brand, you have your own sports drink, your own clothing line, YouTube, <laughs> podcast. He just started listening. All these you things. don't do that much, but you do but it. But you don't do that much. And I'm like, <laughs> golly, yeah. like, yeah, that man doesn't sleep. So, yeah. Prime, I understand it. I understand it. Yeah, he gets those 200 milligrams of caffeine. And you're good for the rest of the day. Away. For the next three days. Yeah, for the next three days. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. No, they're killing it. They're they killing it. are them. killing it. They're probably surrounded by a really good team too, though. Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for sure. You definitely yeah. need. You ever heard? Look at your five friends, mm-hmm. and how much money they make, who they are, mm-hmm. personality-wise, like character. Yeah. Like that is gonna be you. Mm. You keep hanging around those people. That's who you're gonna be, and it's. I mean, I'm sure they've just surrounded themselves around some successful people. And they've become a success story, you know. And the people around them, you know, you get around, you get around some successful people. Guess what? You're gonna be the sixth one, dude. So. This is literally insane. <laughs> I'm going to tell you. He's gonna tell me something. He's gonna tell us something. But whose birthday is it today? It's somebody's birthday. It's Isn't my it? mom's birthday. Happy birthday, Mama Sis. Three. Mama Sis's birthday today. We're going to give her a call later on today. Successful Listen life, to young man. He said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want. You get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP. Only quality people. You earn within two to $3,000 of your closest friends. I found that out. I left all my bro- broke friends. I said, y'all got to go. <laughs> Because I used to be so broke, I'd pass a bank and trip the alarm. Yo. 
and the third thing he said, develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. Mm. If you, how did you just start yeah, talking man. about your five groups in your friend group and talk about a good team? And that's I literally watched that this morning on my way to work, mm. and and he said that he said only quality people, O Q P. Yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, that's. You got to look at it in not a negative way, though. Yeah, Like, absolutely. you're not just cutting people off because you don't personally like them. But if yeah. you want to be great and you want to grow and you want to be amazing, yeah. these are things you have to consider. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. No, nah, it's... The, the, the people you are around, it's like... Peer pressure is so real. So real. There are... There are personalities that are infectious... Yep. Like personalities that draw you to them. Mm-hmm. And we were just talking about some people we work with mm-hmm. whose personalities are so great that mm-hmm. they draw people to them. And then there are personalities that like take from. Yeah. Like relationships are reciprocal. Like if right. you are not pouring into me as much as I'm pouring into you, mm-hmm. you become a parasite. Right, because you're life draining. Right. But if you get around some people who are life giving and they pour back into you, mm. it's like that's so. It's refreshing being around people who you don't feel like you're constantly pouring into, but they're also pouring back to you. They're reciprocating the value that you're giving back. You know. Yes. Like mm. that is like that's. I think that's why a lot of people, but like a lot of people struggle with that early on in their life. Yeah, like they sure. they don't know like. They are no, they're not they don't have that mindset right like you, when you're in a group of friends like in your circle of friends like your goal is to stay in that circle of friends yeah. no matter what at any cost any sacrifice yeah. even if like you're just being taken from before you're given anything yeah and but I think that like right when it clicked for me like more so like because I have a really tight group of friends from back home that are still tight and in my circle for a reason yeah. because but I also had to do some trimming around the, the that bigger circle because there was certain directions that people were going and, and that was their direction they were going and I wasn't gonna let them take me with them yeah and so so that's insane. Yeah. That's a great mindset to have. But like that that how did you you talked about it and I was like, oh my god, I was I saw this earlier today, like we didn't talk about it at all today, but then now <laughs> it comes out right now. There's so many weird coincidences like that. Like, okay, so I, I told you this already. Yeah. Your birthday was a couple days ago as well. Yeah, it was. On the same day as my parents' anniversary. Yeah. <sighs> that's insane. <laughs> First of all, happy anniversary, mom and dad. Happy anniversary. And then, mom, you got one chance to answer the phone. We're going to call you in right now. We got something for you. <coughs> Let's see. They're in Vegas right now, so they're having a hey, good time. Hey, they're probably having a good time, but it's still early in there, so it is early they might now. not be out. Let's see. Let's see if we answer. Let's see if we answer. We'll put it up closer. It's probably like it's 7 o'clock here. Imagine not answering the phone on the podcast. If they don't answer the phone, they don't get a chance to be we'll on just, the We'll just call them back at the end of the we'll episode, I guess. just call them back at the end, yeah. That's fine. You know what? Or we'll leave a voicemail. It's like 5 o'clock there. We'll just leave a voicemail. She said that they were going to go to New York, New York, and go ride that Your roller coaster. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. Wow. Mama sis! Sorry, sister. Mom. Is not available. Wow. She's going to get a message. At the tone, please record please your message. Sing it. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Well... Are we going to sing the black version or the... <laughs> what? What's the difference? The Stevie Wonder version. <laughs> yes. We'll, you, we'll do both of them at the no, same No, we'll time. do the regular version. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mama. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. All right. That's going to be the longest message ever, but when you listen to it, never delete this message. I love you, Mom. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. (laughs) That was amazing. That was amazing. She's going to listen to that voicemail and be like, wow, what an epic voicemail. Like, can't ever delete it. She had a chance to be on the podcast, though. Had a chance to be on the podcast, but you know what? That's okay. That is okay. We're going to do this more often. Y'all better be ready. Yeah, if you want to be on the podcast, just answer the phone. Answer the phone. That's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. All you got to do, we'll get you on here, and we'll, uh, 
we'll chat it up. It's not hard. Hit the green button. Yep. Or slide the slide it. Or slide that. You know. Yep. Yep. Hundred percent. Not too bad. Not too bad. Hmm. We legit didn't talk about what we were going to talk about today. No, we never do. We, we really never, never do. No. You kind of had an off day today. Oh, I did. And I kind of had a. I felt like I ran a track meet today. <laughs> I feel like you always run a track meet. I do. When I work with Miss Petty, I'm running a track meet. Bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. It is. It's an exhausting day. But, yeah. Like, but we're here. But we're here. We made it. Drinking Prime. Drinking Prime. Getting through the best day of the week. We love shooting podcasts. I was literally driving Rain home. or shine. Rain or shine. Sleepy or excited. Yep. We're here. We're here. Like, literally, I was telling my wife earlier, I, I, when I was driving home, I told her, I was like, yeah, I had a I had an off day today. I was just like I wasn't feeling it today, you know. I was just kind of like in one of those moods, and like it wasn't because of anything specifically. Yeah. I was just like, I'm here. I'll just yeah. do my job, and I'm yeah. gonna go home. Yeah. End of day. And then I was like, I think maybe if we shoot the podcast, I'll feel better. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I think maybe like once I'm in this shooting the podcast, I feel like my psyche will just clear. Yeah, yeah. Then it's true. That's and it always so works. funny. Like it that works. Like is... I had that looking forward to. Like all my, my whole drive home, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, we gonna film the podcast. All right, it's like yeah. it was set up, and I was like, all right, let's, let's go, go. let's it, go. It's about to turn up. It can't be that bad. No. It can't be that bad. That's hilarious because I, I felt that way too, and I legit wanted to just go get a workout in, and then go to bed. Go to bed. Like I today was a day. I think we saw. I saw. We saw close to 20 patients today. Dang. It was... We were flying, bro. Like, I was... And then my last two... I didn't even want to do the EKG. I got a nurse... Another nurse to do the EKG. <laughs> you I was just me to do it. It was just that kind of day. I was just so tired at the end of the day. Oh, I was yeah. like, hey, uh... Can somebody help me out with this? Because I... Your boy is tired. Yeah. And but like, then I got here and I felt that energy. Like <laughs> I've had like two sips of this, so it can't be the 200 can't milligrams be. of the caffeine. Well, two sips is like probably like 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. <laughs> I don't know. Somewhere around there. I'm bad at math. <laughs> Me too. I had public math. That's about it. Dude, school is fun. <laughs> Constantly learning and educating, bro. I feel like that's what the military is. That is what the military is. It is, honestly. But like... Oh. But you're in, you're taking college classes right now mm-hmm. at a university and crushing it, mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. immunizing everybody on ba- our base and another base. Good you're Lord. you're killing it, man. I feel like. What classes are you taking? What What are you excited about? I'm not excited. Oh, you're not excited. <laughs> you said classes are amazing. Classes are amazing. Like I think that that like I look at it right now because I've been taking classes since 2020, mm-hmm. and I've I haven't stopped since 2020. Yeah. Like I've had no break. I've just gone through till now, which yeah. is crazy because I can. But it's only because I can take like six to eight classes a year because of tuition assistance, and like yeah. that's all I am gonna do. I'm not gonna dip into yeah, my yeah. GI bill and yeah. use it for my master's degree. But the classes I'm in right now require one to two essays a week per class. Okay. So it's a lot. So you're of doing writing. a lot. A lot of writing. You are a medic, a husband. Yep. You run a podcast. That's right. You're a college student. Oh, my Lord. gosh, man. Saving lives. Saving lives on the day. Oh, on the daily. But I'm so tired. <laughs> I feel that, dude. I feel it. I had this conversation with Estrada earlier this week. I was like, bro, like, we do a lot. Like, I mean, everyone has their own a lot, right? Like, yeah, it, yeah. I'm not saying, like, oh, I'm doing more than everybody. Yeah. That's different. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm doing a lot for yeah. myself. Like, I'm doing a lot of stuff. I yeah. drive very lo- very far distances to get here and to come home. Mm-hmm. I only have so many hours of the day. This podcast is my, is my like, oh, hey, this is my fun. This is what I want to do. <coughs> and, and so, like, that is where I also want to have enough energy left over after I do all the hard stuff. To, like, make sure that this still happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't, like, we haven't missed a week since we no, started. No, we and This haven't. is episode eight of season two. Yo. Three, so we've done five total. I, no I think idea. just you and I, because I, I think can't. you came in on episode three. I told you I'm bad at math. <laughs> so five. <laughs> so we did five total. Oh, man. But, like... Yeah, you do live way up here. Because I almost texted you. I was like, hey, bro. Oh, no, can we do tomorrow? I knew it was coming. So I was like, yeah, it's perfect. The camera will charge. Come on I almost, I almost oh. did. But I was like, dude, and, see, I need to get here tonight. I would have let you say, like, oh, hey, bro, can we do it tomorrow? I'm like, yeah, no problem. After I had set this all up. Because I was like, 
probably in the same mindset. Like, if you had not come, I would have just been like, <laughs> and I would have gone to sleep. I don't know why, but I feel like, I feel like this is not only fun, mm-hmm. but I don't want to give up on this. No, I don't want to. I don't want to take one week off. No. Because if you get complacent in any way, shape, or form, just one week can turn into two weeks, mm-hmm. and two weeks can become three weeks, and then before you know it, you haven't. It happens with your, your diet, your workouts, literally everything. 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 And it's like so you got to maintain that consistency yeah. in order to see progress. Mm-hmm. And it was just I legit was like before I was about to text you, I was like, I'm really into this. Like this is really fun. Like I yeah. I love hanging out with Noah. A B like what if. What if this really does become something? We got 51 subscribers now. But what if... I mean, like... I Oh, dude, I heard somebody say this. You have to play or plan or work at your gift or craft as if you are... As if you are speaking to the thousands. Right. Right? Don't... If, if you're speaking to... And I, and I heard this when I was a youth pastor of four kids. Mm-hmm. I had four kids in, in my youth ministry when I first got started. Um... And we ended with like 80, close to 100 kids. Yeah. And uh, somebody was like, hey, man, what you're doing with the little, you're going to reap. You're going to reap. You know, what you sow in right now, what you're sowing in right now, yeah. you'll reap it eventually. Mm-hmm. And um, I just, I don't know, man. I just feel like this ain't just, this isn't just something that we're doing for fun. Like, yeah. I really would like to see this blow up. Yeah. And really like to see us doing some good. Yeah, dude. You know? Like, if you think about it, right, like we're forty nine people away from hitting that subscribe button to yeah. change lives. Yeah, like that's crazy to me. Yeah, and like we like that's oh, it's the it's them all about mindset. Yeah, like I when we talk about the podcast at work, you I can I can feel it, and it kills me inside not to like retort because yeah, like yeah. when we talk about the podcast, we're being legit. Like we we're, are. Like, oh, we're doing this for real. Like yeah. if y'all don't watch, that's cool. Like yeah. I, I'm not asking you to. I'm saying if you would like to, you can. Yeah. You have that option. Everyone has that option. But when people are like, or you know, like we're filming a podcast, and you get those like, <laughs> okay, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> almost like they're doubting us, yeah. right? Like they're like, oh, okay, like yeah, you guys got a podcast because a million people have podcasts, right? Right, right. But I'm like, no, we're really doing. We're this. really doing. This. <laughs> like, yeah. We're really out here filming this, everything like that. But I feel like definitely more people. People have been like, oh, wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Than, than not, but like you're always. I've heard have way more good feedback about it than I've heard negative. I haven't heard anything negative. No, I haven't either, and I can't wait for that. Like I can't wait yeah. for them to be like, oh man, like your podcast sucks. Your podcast <laughs> trash. And then like they're gonna say that, and we're gonna be like, okay, cool. Like you're always gonna have people that say that, but then yeah. what can we, I change? Yeah, what can we do? Yeah, give me some feedback. Also, and then from that as well, we would probably once we do that, once we hit that hundred subscribers and we go change some lives yeah like i already have different ideas of like how because we talked about it before already it's like when we hit 100 subscribers we're going to put up 100 and we're going to change lives Mm -hmm. and i thought about it in many different ways i was like we could turn it into a whole content thing where either we can just one lump sum give it up to one or we can split it up and give it to multiple people yeah like smaller denominations it still changed it's just different levels so like if we put up 200 dollars and we split it 20 bucks a person yeah we could literally do, I'm bad at math, 10 <laughs> people. We could yeah. give it to 20 bucks to 10 people that might really need it. Yeah. That $20 might really make a difference. Absolutely. Absolutely. Butterfly effect. Butterfly effect. I love, I love it. Oh, butterfly effect. Do you believe in the butterfly effect? I am not familiar with it. Oh. Is it like the ripple effect? Similar, but it's like, okay, so the butterfly effect is like if, if you went back in time, right, mm-hmm. and, like, you wrote down the lottery numbers, right, right. and you played the lottery current time because mm-hmm. you knew what the numbers were going to be and you played them, that is changing the course of history, right? Oh. Like, so if you went back in time and you made a, a right turn instead of a left turn, there's a chance that, like, we could have never met. Like, something that small. It's like the multiverse kind of stuff, like the butterfly effect. It's really weird. Like, I can, I can read the definition of the butterfly effect, but that's essentially what it is. Butterfly effect. It is the butterfly effect is the idea that small things can have nonlinear impacts on a complex system. The concept is imagined with a butterfly flapping its wings and causing a typhoon. Like that, you ever heard that? Like, mm. oh, when a butterfly flaps its wings, yeah, it can yeah. cause a typhoon. Um, 
Oh, it says, of course, a, sim- a single act like a butterfly flapping its wings cannot cause a typhoon, but it's that concept. Like, so for example, imagine you're stuck in traffic. You are in a, in the right lane and then, er, and this lane has to merge to the left because there's a construction on the side of the road. You wait patiently for the car on your left to let you in. Not a single car lets you in for about 10 minutes. And let's say now, so you're now you're stuck in that position for 10 minutes, but then there's an accident that happens 10 minutes exactly ahead that would have been you if you had gotten merged over whoa does it make sense dang like it's like it's really weird because it's like people it's like something that is not like scientifically proven yeah but it's just the concept it's similar to the mandala effect kind of like it's like it explains how you see something one way but the butterfly effect is in that sense like you ever see those movies like final destination Yeah, yeah yeah like when someone's walking and like a building or a construction sign like falls down yeah but like you walk past it and turn around and see it happen to someone else, you're like, damn, that could have been me. Yeah. That's the butterfly. Effect. Dang, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Just like slowly impacting I've had it. a few moments in my life like that. Where, <laughs> <laughs> like I could think of, wow. You're like, damn, I could have died. Or like, dang, yeah. that could have been real bad. Or yeah. anything like that. Like, it could literally be a moment yeah. in your life. Like, I've, drove, I've driven multiple times where I've been driving and I've seen an accident happen like, right there yeah right and you're like dang if i was just going a little bit faster or if i wasn't paying attention or if i was where that person was it could have been me yeah could have been me Dude. but that's that's like that butterfly effect that's the ripple effect change right so if i go up to somebody <clears throat> or we go up to somebody after we we hit the that hundred benchmark yeah. and we give someone twenty dollars right and that person was like starving or like they right. needed twenty dollars for a whatever i don't know yeah anything yeah and we gave it to them, and they were, like, about to give up. Right. Gave them that $20, and they're like, dang, like, wow, okay, I can get this done, get this done, whatever. Yeah. And then, like, ripple effect, butterfly effect could change their life. Dang. That is... Or it could change the way that they view humanity. Could give them that small little you know? taste that they yeah. needed to get back it's up. Like, oh, wow, people are good, and there are good people out there. Or what if I pay this back, you know? What if I pay it forward and yeah. someday when I'm able to be the person who's the giver, not the receiver, mm-hmm. I'm going to be a giver, you know? Yeah. yeah, I can see that happening for sure. Literally. And like, it, it, it's not, it's not outlandish to think that either. Yeah. Because a lot of people will be like, oh, $20 is $20. Like they'll probably do something bad with it. Right. That's what, that's the conception. Right. But like at that point, it's not in my control. My yeah. control is to give them an opportunity to make a good choice for themselves. Absolutely. And I choose to believe that 95% of the people that you choose to help will return it tenfold someday. Right, yeah, absolutely. That's just my faith in humanity. Yeah. I, yeah. Can't, I can't say the same for everybody, but yeah. that's that's the change we want to at least initiate. Yeah. Like, you want to make, you want to be a catalyst in that type of change. So if it does go the right way, for sure, you're literally, piece by piece, going to make the world a better place. For sure. And, uh, we, we all have free will. And honestly... The fact that you have the power to empower somebody's life change mm-hmm. should encourage you to believe that they also have that same power sure. within them. It just probably needs to be sparked, A, mm-hmm. or they just need they, they need a hand to get up, you know? Right. It's, it's, it's like we all like go a- through challenging times and we all need... Like, if it weren't for somebody, we can't get through this world alone, right? If it weren't for somebody helping us out somewhere, some way, somehow, at any point in our lives, you know, we wouldn't be where we are, you know? There's no such thing as a self-made man. I heard somebody say that one one time. It's like, because even, even, even the people who are extremely successful had somebody... Mm-hmm. help them along the way 100 they had somebody influential say hey you should hire this person or hey you should give this job to this person or hey yeah. this person is worth the investment 100 percent, right like we all at some point in our lives needed somebody mm-hmm. to lend that hand yeah so yeah that butterfly i believe in it yeah dude. for sure that's dope let's do it well, that's it like that's really like the I don't know. There's like so many different ways that that can go, and I think that it's going to be really good when we do hit that point. But there's also um, there's this other podcast I've been watching. Uh, it's called the You Should Know podcast. You Should Know is a good podcast. Yeah. They are so funny. Yeah. But like I was, I've, I've like binged all their episodes. Yeah. Like every single one of them. They were like one of the first podcasts that I watched that I was like, I want to do 
this. Yeah. Like, that was, I mean, I've, I've always loved the idea of podcasting. Oh, here we go. It's round two. Mama calling in. Hello, welcome. We're here at the, you're at the, uh, on the Good Trouble podcast. Hello, is this, uh, is this mom? It is mom. Okay, well, we have a message for you. I don't know if you got the last message, but, uh, we have something to tell you real quick. Oh, okay, tell me. Okay, you ready? Yes. Okay. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear mom. Happy birthday to you. Stevie Wonder version. Oh my gosh, thank you so Just much. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, it's like the best birthday serenade ever. That's right, and you're the first caller on the um, on our podcast. How does it feel? You almost called it the You Should Know. I almost Actually, did. It feels pretty amazing because I am like your biggest fan, so it fits. It's great. We love you. Thank you so much for your support. One of the real subscribers out here comments every week, likes every week. And shout out to anybody that actually watches, like and share and become followers so we can get to 100. Yeah, let's go! I love you so much. Love you too. Oh, thank you for calling, baby, and thank you for the serenade. You're the most amazing son ever. Ah, you see that? Shout out. See, you heard that, Morgan? Favorite son. <laughs> I did say favorite. I said amazing. We all heard favorite. Oh, favorite dang. Favorite Noah. Uh-huh. That's right. Oh, I love you. Love you, too. Okay, thank you so much, baby. I love you. Have a good rest of your podcast. I love you, too, baby. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, sweetheart. Bye, bye. Hi, sir. You're on the uh, the Good Trouble podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Oh, you sound real energetic right now. I'm very energetic. I mean, I'm gonna need you to do like ten jumping jacks real quick and get back into the the mindset of like, oh my gosh, I'm on the Good Trouble podcast. Get that blood flowing. Do some push-ups. Wake up. Drink a prime energy drink. See, the problem is, when it's negative 20 degrees up here and the sunlight just went down, it gets a little cold, so the energy kind of dies down a little bit. But ne- we're all mellow. We're all good. We're right? all good. You know, it's all negative 20? Up to some good trouble. Why is it negative, why is it negative 20? Tell, tell us where you're at. Well, if uh, people don't know already, I am a secret agent. I work with Santa Claus, and it's a year-long project where I'm all the way up in the northern part of Greenland, uh, taking care of some secret Space Force stuff, and yeah, it's uh, it is a good time up here in good old Thule, Greenland. Hey, that's pretty dope. Wow, what, awesome. what a story. My goodness. What a life to live. Can you let us know if we're on the nice or naughty list? Uh, well, I can't divulge that information, you know. we got to keep our classified information close to chest. So uh, just double-check your list, make sure you're good. If not, expect some coal. For those of you that don't know, this is Morgan. This is my brother. I've mentioned him on the podcast a few other times. He's also one of the primetime subscribers and likers and commenters. So welcome to the podcast, dude. I will be the first comment in every video, no problem. Yep, I told I told him that. I said that we he was every single time we got to get on there, he's just writes first. That's the only comment he leaves. So dude, we got some good things for you today. First of all, you're gonna have to give me a good thing. Oh, you gotta say it again. I can't hear you. Oh, you see, is that Greenland connection? I need a good thing from you. Give me, a, give me a good thing. Give me Tell a good us thing. something good. Something good about your day. A good thing. Well, about wait, about my what? About your day. About my day. <laughs> One okay. good thing that happened today to you. Good thing. One good thing that happened today. So. There's not a lot of stuff that's going on up here in Thule. We're a very, very small, remote area. However, we just got out of something called the dark season. And if you don't know, the dark season was when there was 24 hours of dark for about a three-month stretch. Jeez. As of about two weeks ago, we started to see sunlight. And now, actually yesterday marked the first day of a normal day schedule so we have about 
12 to 16 hours of sun and then about 12 to 8 hours of, of darkness so it's almost like a normal day wow wow um, that we will is eventually incredible. in about a month have nothing but 24 hours of sun so if you go out at two o'clock in the morning you're going to see the sun as if it is like i guess the sun rising uh, but it never sets <laughs> it will never cross the horizon and it'll be circling above me 24 7 that's pretty cool actually i mean that's crazy that it was there's a period of darkness for that long but that's still pretty cool yeah, expect some pictures at 2 o'clock in the morning on the weekend saying, hey, it's still sunny out. <laughs> it's still sunny out. Wow. Dude, that is so awesome. It's crazy what we, like, the things that we neglect or, like... Take advantage? Take, yeah. Yeah, we don't appreciate. We take it for granted. Yeah, yeah we take it granted. a whole list of things that I have definitely taken advantage of, and it's, it's those things being up here that make you appreciate what you have and yeah. i think that's what people miss out on a lot of times is we get so caught up on the things that we don't have and then when you get to a point where you are living on uh, a very minimal things in life that we take for granted it makes you appreciate everything that you have much much more that's, that's so huge. good man that's huge that's oh. awesome also morgan this is mumba you, you never met him but this is mumba I feel like we have met spiritually throughout through the, the four, podcast, four, like, probably five uh, episodes. So. <laughs> That's right. So it's like you almost—it's it's like the, you know him. It's part of the family. That's what it is. That's right. Part of the good trouble family. Let's go. The good trouble family. Okay, but the real reason we called you is because we have a uh, a would you rather that is borderline impossible to answer. Mm, and we okay. want to hear your That's reasoning. Better. I was going to say, is there deliberation? Can I ask questions about the would you rather? Sure. Limited of two questions. Two questions. Ooh, okay. Two questions. I got to make them good then. All okay. right. What you got for me? Okay. So would you rather be locked inside a mall with seven black mambas that are actively hunting you or stuck in a mall for 24 hours with a silverback gorilla actively hunting you? Are the lights on in the mall, or is this like you got locked in the mall after they closed and they turned the lights off? Oh, it's a great question. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Dang. My answer is only the emergency lights are on. So there's some light, but it's not fully lit. Oh. Is it those red lights? Now, this is all, it's all part of the long, same question. Like those red lights, or are we like talking like the floodlights, like they have like the every third light is on type deal? Some emergency lights and then some partial lighting in certain areas, like main areas of the mall. Like the food court, it's got like one floodlight. All the hallways are pretty much dim and all the stores have only their emergency overhead red lights on. Okay, okay. Now, when the mall closes, obviously certain stores bring down those gates to prevent people from walking in and out. Am I in the mall with those gates already down, or is it like free range of the mall except for the exit doors? Free range of the mall, you can go anywhere. All stores are open. I think... The daredevil answer is obviously the seven snakes, right? Because they're small. You know, you, you can kind of see around. If you stay in an open area, like, I'm going to go to the food court. Black mambas are not there. small, bro. Black <laughs> mambas are huge. They're, they're not small, but, I mean, they're also, you can see kind of where they're slithering. If you're in an open area, right? Yeah, that yeah, area yeah. Is in the food court that are super open. So, black mamba on white tile, you can see them. Yeah. But they're but, black mambas. But the, exactly, that's the problem. They're black mambas, they're fast, and they're very slippery. They are so no matter and where venomous. You go, even if you got behind the gates, you would still probably get caught because they'd be slithering through, no problem. Some black gorilla, I only got to worry about one. So I'm going to go with the silverback gorilla. Same. As my opponent. Same. Bro, that Same. gorilla can see you. Bro. <laughs> Even in the dark, like, snakes have the, their vision is like, it's led by heat, so they can see you. Oh my. And that's the thing, too. 
if you go into a fight, it's got to be a one on one. It can't be a seven on seven. Seven. Right. Difference. No matter what it is. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. But Black Mambas don't roll in packs. Like, they could be all over, strategically placed, ready to kill you. At One of them, only one of them has to bite you and you're done. That's my point. That's why I'm going with the gorilla. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But the only this is what I say, because I, I almost consider the, the, the snakes, right, in this scenario, because... Snakes, they some of them, the black moles, they can climb, right? Like they can they can climb to certain extents. But if I climbed up high enough and I'm I'm like on a like a like say you climbed up on top of like a soda machine or even a table, right? Or like a high table, you stacked a bunch of tables and you climbed up there, the snakes aren't getting to you. You just gotta chill out there for twenty four hours. A gorilla can climb anything. So now here's the other thing too. I'm just trying to survive, right? If you're trying to survive, I'm just trying to survive. Evade, I think you're gonna evade a gorilla for a yeah. period. If yeah. you were going for a hunt and you took out those black mumbos one at a time, I'm sure there's a store somewhere in the mall that can provide you a weapon that you can take out these snakes one at a time, especially if you know where they're at and know where they're coming. You just need like a, a bad pro shop inside. I like him. You have a couple nets, you're good to go. You gonna catch a black mamba with a net? I like, I like Morgan. I like the way he thinks. I'm not saying catch it. I'm saying try to trap it in a <sighs> sense. Dude, yeah, because if you one at a time, systematically remove one snake at a time. Ah, uh, but we're not hunting, and th- they're hunting us. So I'm going yeah, with the gorilla. Go with the gorilla. <laughs> that, I'm going with the gorilla. This is just wrong. I'm going with the gorilla. I like the way Morgan thinks. My God, he's a smart guy. Something tells me he's brilliant. <laughs> he's probably doing something really amazing to change the world, and um, because he's got a beautiful mind. I well, love his I've questions. been trapped in a mall with a gorilla before, and that's why I'm here talking to you today, because I survived. He survived! <laughs> Had he been trapped in the mall with seven black mambas, he probably wouldn't have survived. Yeah, see, if, if that was the case, then I probably wouldn't have called in. So, yeah. you know, yeah. it is what it is. <laughs> Damn. Well, dude, thanks for being a great call-in today. This was a good quality call-in. Is there anything you want to say to everybody before you head out? Take the time to like, subscribe, and join in the comments and all the good trouble that's about to come up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I literally, when I said before that I look forward to the little things in life and that I appreciate the little things, nothing makes my weekend more whole than knowing I got a good video I can watch and listen to and relate and laugh and just be a part of this Good Trouble podcast. So you guys are doing awesome. Keep it up. I also want to know if you guys have a solid theme going forward. I know you came up with the new name, Good Trouble Podcast, but I think there needs to be there needs to be some kind of theme. I know you got the sunglasses. I know you got the energy drinks, but there's got to be some kind of... You're missing a mascot. Ooh, help us out. either blow up Groot, or we need to get something that really identifies what good trouble really is okay so i like that that. that's my challenge i like that hopefully you guys can figure something out oh we will and uh i'm in it for the long ride so let me know what you guys think cool hell yeah dude well thanks again for calling in love you brother love you too you guys take care now all right man all right bye bye that was dope that was dope what a call in i like morgan man Dude, shout out. My God. We got into so much... Him and yeah. I got into so much good trouble, dude. <laughs> my goodness. You know what? Crazy thing, right? So, my he's also military, right? I think I've already told you this, but I was his first salute when he commissioned as, oh, in, as a second LT. Dude, yeah. that's awesome. I flew all the way out there to Colorado from... Or I took leave to go out there to see his graduation for the Air Force Academy. And then the day before their graduation, they have a commissioning ceremony, right? So, enlisted the officer. I'm enlisted. He's an officer now. So, when you need to have an enlisted member or... Because no one in the officer is a lower rank than you at that point. So, right. no one, you don't render... Because you would always render salute to a higher ranking. Right. So I got to go out there in full OCPs. I went out there, right? And like, there's this picture of us, and like we're literally like we're like standing, saluting with like this the chapel in the background, dude. Like I'm gonna put it up right now, right now, right here. Okay. I bet that was dope. It was experience. a crazy moment. 
crazy, crazy moment because like I, it, you, a lot of people would be like, ah, oh, you gotta salute your older brother or everything like that. I was like, no, dude, I got to salute my older brother. I respect this man. He like, deserves this. Literally, the salute. he yeah. deserved it. Like that's probably like, and that's that's the thing, right? You, yeah. We salute all the time yeah. on the daily. Like, we saluted today. We did. We were talking about it today. <laughs> like, and it's just like this. I feel like it's almost like one of the few customs and courtesies that's like lost. Like it shouldn't be. Right. But there's just a certain like. You salute an officer, you don't know who that officer is. You don't really know who they are. Mm -hmm. You're probably never going to see them. And you might see them again, but you never know. Yeah, but you are showing that respect. So how much more meaningful it is to salute your brother. Dude, I know. Like, it. oh, God, yeah. It was, like, one of those surreal moments. Like, I just gave him the salute, and I was like, wow, man. Like, he did it. That's awesome. Like, it was really cool. But that was great for having him come in and and do We should do more call-ins. Yeah, I agree. I think that was a good time. Let's do it. That's funny that you just told that story because today we were coming back from lunch and both our hands were full. <laughs> yeah, we both had stuff in our hands. <laughs> and the major walked out of the hospital and I could see him coming and I was, you're always looking, especially when you're outside, trying to see their rank so that you, if you, you walk past an officer, you don't miss the salute. Right. And so I was, I honestly, we are surrounded by officers, and I was telling you this today. Yeah. But outside, like if I'm walking from my car to the hospital, I really don't see very many. Right. And uh, but today was like one of the first few times that I've actually had to throw in a salute up, and I was like excited about it. Oh yeah. Uh, like Ew. I legit like had my water bottle in my right hand. I was like, oh no, I'm moving it over. Good afternoon, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Kept it moving. It so. was the cleanest transition, yeah. too. Because, like, when you're enlisted, yeah. like, you're always looking, yeah, right? Yeah, like, yeah. you're always, always looking. But, yeah. like, we that's what we did. Because we both recognized that it was an officer way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw him. We're like, mm, okay. Yeah. And it was just the smoothest, we're like, transition. Move. We were sitting there, like, you know, oh. all right. Sorry. <laughs> <Same. laughs> it was just, like, yeah. so clean. But, oh, my God. You remember what I told you right after that? But when you, it only takes one Yes. <laughs> Yes, you gotta tell that story. Oh shoot! <laughs> but it only takes one time for you to salute a non-officer for you to just be so anxious all the time, right? So again, it, there's a certain sense of pride for us enlisted members. Like yeah. not only like when you get to salute an officer because it's just a custom and courtesy, yeah. But it's like it's deeper than that, yeah. and like not a lot of us understand that unless you've had a situation where you were like, wow, like yeah. big salute, right? So I was walking into the hospital, coming back from lunch, and I saw this person walking, power walking, like, just demand respect walking, like, almost a march-like <laughs> walk. I was like, this is, this is a general. Walking with a purpose. Walking with some urgency that, like, you just, you just know, right? Yeah. I'm like, that's an officer. So I'm, I'm like, all right, I know it's an officer. Cool. Same thing. Got all my stuff with my left hand. I'm walking up. I'm like, morning, ma'am. <laughs> Looked straight at the rank. It was an airman. Oh, man. One stripe. Whoa. Immediately starts, like, just... One stripe. Audibly laughing. Shit. I got raped her. <laughs> and I still... <clears throat> Morning, man. Hmm. Proud as my... And I looked up, and as soon as I looked up and looked at her rank, I was like... She probably was a phase two student. Just Oh, it could have been. Just at our hospital training. It could have been. That's hilarious. Been. And I know that, like, in that moment, I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> like, I am so dumb. But then... That audibly laughed like audibly laughed it was like <clears throat> I'm not an officer and I was like okay and I like ran inside put that down so quick put that I was like oh yeah I was just uh, adjusting my hat here man my hat was itching my yeah, hat my hat yeah like <laughs> gosh dude like that was oh, my whole life is that moment yeah. my whole life is that moment <laughs> like I just have so many of those like awkward like uh, yeah, like yeah. awkward moments like the other day I went to Chick-fil-A for breakfast I never get up early enough to go get any food on the way to work because work is so far away I was like the first person at Chick-fil-A it's like 6am I'm tired I'm driving but I'm about to get Chick-fil-A so I'm feeling okay I get to the window and the lady goes thank you for your service the words that came out of my mouth could have been anything and it would have been okay <laughs> But what I said was not okay. <laughs> like, what you say? said, thank you for your service. I said, ma'am, thank you much, ma'am. <laughs> wow. You. But like, it didn't come out clean like that. Yeah. I was like, oh, I didn't know what to say. <laughs> I said, ma'am, thank you much, ma'am, thank you, ma'am. I said, ma'am, like three yeah. times. And it was broken like <clears throat> that. And I, 
I just, again, I grabbed my food and just drove off. I was like, oh, my God. It's almost like when people see you in uniform and they say thank you for your service, mm-hmm. it's almost awkward because we, like, don't, we don't... I don't provide you direct service. We don't ask that for that. Never. And so it's like... It, it's a little uncomfortable. It's a little weird. And so to think about what to say back yeah. is... I can see how you'd be oh. like, man, Vicky, uh, uh, like, uh, it's kind of like awkward. Just, oh. Yeah. And like, typically, like, I always have a generic response ready. Like, yeah. it's not that I'm saying that just because I'm like on autopilot. Right. But I just say the same thing every time and same. I've never had a problem with same. it. Same. I'm yeah. always like, thank you for your support. Yeah. It's always what I say. Right. What do you say? Thank you for your support. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I feel like that's a common thing. Yeah. Like, and we, we get a lot of practice on that because mm-hmm. if you were like, you're welcome. People would look. I know at they would. They would. They'd, They'd be, be like, like, "Wow, you know, fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> like, right? Never mind. I yeah. send it. Like, yeah. no. And we got that practice because out of basic, we were wearing our blues and we we're walking around San Antonio Riverwalk on that stuff. Right? Bro. Everyone's like, "Hey, thank you for your thank service." You for your like, service. they're so supportive down there. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like you just constantly say like, "Thank you for your support. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your support." Because my dad told me that. Yeah. He told me because I told him that I had I was having a lot of trouble. Like, what do I say? Because I don't know what to say mm-hmm. when they're like, thank you for your service. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, no problem. Like, yeah. oh, yeah, you're welcome. Like, that didn't feel right. Yeah. And he was like, what you should say is just say thank you for your support. Because you're you're reciprocating their thankfulness for your, for your service. Absolutely. And you're nothing without them. Yeah, 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 for sure. If you, you without them, you have nothing to protect, nothing yeah. to serve. Yeah. Like, it honestly does mean a lot when people say thank you for your service. Cause right. I genuinely do feel pride wearing the uniform. Hundred percent. You know, and absolutely. And I'm, I'm like, I feel lucky, the fact that I get to be in the military. I get to be in the United States Air Force. It's really cool, right? That people, when people say that, usually, honestly, dude, there have been times where people have bought my lunch simply because I'm in uniform, yes. and they bought me, they bought me, and it's like I didn't ask for it, and right? It's, and it's like, wow, thank you so much that for you real. value. The sacrifice, because we are sacrificing yeah. a lot, you know. Oh yeah. To you know to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's go. But, so so it means a lot when we hear it, but it's almost like that compliment. Like you know those people who like have weird things about receiving compliments. Like right. It's like ah, I don't know what to say. Yeah. That's exactly what it feels like it in the is. moment. Like I usually. If somebody's like, hey, man, I like your fit, or I like your shoes, I'm like, appreciate it, man. Like, yeah, I, got I, I got it from so Yeah. Uh, but it's different yeah, it's when different. people are like, thank you for your service. It's like, I understand that you're expressing yeah. gratitude and mm-hmm. expressing the value, you, you know, that you value the, yeah. the fact that there are people who put their lives on the line right. to protect this country and what we have. Mm. And so it means it means a lot that you would see that. But I don't feel like me reciprocating thank you for your support is enough. Right. You know, I, yeah. I want to say something else, yeah. but there's nothing else that can that I feel like could reciprocate mm. how I feel. Like, yeah, I appreciate you seeing that, you know? Right. Like, oh. But at the same time, not sounding like an asshole. Right. <laughs> you know, how do you do it? It's like, how do you do it? It's, it's a tough thing to say. Like, so, oh. But thank, but thank you for your support. I feel like is a good thing. I feel like thing. that's a really good thing, yeah. and I feel like a lot of people do use that. And yeah. so I feel like also the people that are like saying thank you for your service, and like kind of expect, kind of expected yeah. back, right? It's almost like a like it's like when you go to a movie, right? And they give you your ticket, and they're like, "Hey, enjoy the show," and you're <laughs> like, "You too," and you're like, "Oh, like what did no, I just like? What was I supposed to say? Like, hey man, I appreciate you. Yeah, like or something like that. Yeah, but it's like, hey, thanks, man. Don't feel right. Yeah. It just just feel like I feel like I want to be like, hey man, thanks for tear my ticket like, yeah, you know? tear my ticket. like I don't know what yeah. to say but like I also said this because um I I'm also like the first person to give proper like cur- like respect as well like if I'm out at the store and I'm not in uniform and I see someone like an, a retired vet and they got a hat on like yeah. this is Air Force Vietnam anything don't yeah. matter what it is if I yeah. see that I already know that it's a retired veteran because only retired veterans will wear that kind of hat Absolutely. like that's what hats they wear like my grandpa wears those hats and all that stuff like they're proud of it yeah. they're proud of it and I walked up to him I always 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 will walk up to those people and shake their hand hey sir thank you for your service yeah and then, I bet that means the world to them. And I know it does yeah. because at that point, like, I don't care if I'm in Walmart, if I'm in Hobby Lobby, it doesn't matter where I'm at. If I thank him for that service right then and there, that opens up their 
their heart to me like yeah. <laughs> because they'll say like only people that are in the service or have had people in the service in their family will say that to them mm. right like oh thank you for your service mm. you know they don't hear that on daily yeah and then they like uh, this perfect example i was in hobby lobby with my wife and her and i were like walking in, in the same aisle and i turned and i saw somebody and i just walked away i walked away straight to this guy and i was like hey man thank you for your service right shook his hand everything and he was like He's like, wow, like, thank you. And I could tell that it meant a lot to him. And he was telling me, like, and that opens up their, like, their dialogue with you as well. Mm -hmm. Because if I thank you for your first service, I want to interact with them. Mm -hmm. And then he told me this story, like, wow, you know, I, was, I served for X amount of years. He told me he, were, he served for, like, 32 years in yeah. the Air Force. And he said that, like, all the places that he's been, he told me where he's gone, like, things that he's seen, like, yeah. all this and that. And I'm like, wow, sir, like, I'm serving currently and, like, if it wasn't for, and he was like he's like oh well thank you for your service young man and i said sir i appreciate that but without you there is no me absolutely and and that's what i told him yeah. and he was like he teared up a little bit and i almost started teared up i was like without you and your sacrifices i wouldn't be able to continue and carry that torch absolutely. that you provided me with yeah and even though like people don't understand that that's not it wasn't directly that person but every person that's involved in the service will understand that Absolutely. every person in the service will Absolutely. understand that and that's it's a big point of pride for me yeah just because of my family like yeah. my family has been been around it and oh yeah love that stuff dude yeah to be honest bro like there are people who i didn't understand that mm -hmm. before i joined the military right but now being in there is a great appreciation for everyone who's served who's come before us oh yes and um geez i wish that that feeling was readily available to every person who lives in our country because how much better would it be if we valued each other that way mm. or if people understood dang there's some there's some dudes out here who would lay the their life on the line Without have ever even met you. Having not ever met you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't fully understand that either because, I mean, I kind of had a general sense of that yeah. when I joined because of my, just because of my family. But the, the when it clicked for me, I've already told you this too, but when it clicked for me for the first time, I was an honor guard, mm. right? Yeah. And when you hand off that flag to a family member, like thank you for your loved one's honorable and yeah. faithful service. Yeah. Like, please accept this flag. Like, I'm going to explain, the explain when you hand off a flag okay. because somebody watching may not know. So, so like, a flag folding ceremony is typically done at a funeral for a veteran or an active duty service member or just any affiliation with, like, being in the service. And you, we go and we do a full ceremony. We do, like, we, sh we fire off um, live rounds, or not live rounds, fire off a... What are they called? Blanks. We fire those off at the at the service, and we do a flag folding ceremony over their over their casket, and we'll fold the flag and we'll pass it off to the family member folded, and that's why you like the the symbolism of a folded flag. Like you see people like retirees will have them in a shadow box, and then those who have passed away will have a flag that will give it to their loved one, their next of kin. Like you you establish who that is, whether it's a, a widowed a wife, a, a husband, a kid, it, literally any direct correlation to the loved one and we, you pass them off that flag and you tell them you know like just generally like thank you for your loved one's honorable and faithful service on behalf of the president of the united states the united states air force and a grateful nation please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service and you're saying that message and handing off this flag while maintaining a stoic demeanor like right and, and it's that's a tough thing to do like a lot of people can't handle it because the loved one is not just sitting there still with their right. wreck. They just lost somebody that they love. They just lost somebody that they love. But that person and I are cut from the same cloth because we are both fighting and defending the Constitution of the United States of America. Yeah. And nobody will know that feeling until you have that moment. Yeah. And you, you're handing that off and they are just losing it and you yeah. are tr you're staying strong staying stoic you're passing off that flag you stand up you render a final salute you drop it you walk away you don't have any other dialogue with the family you have a set standard of things that you will say and that was the moment for me where i realized that <clears throat> although i am a medic and i work in the hospital and we, we change lives every day that changed me for the long haul i was like 
I had a new perspective that yeah. I'm not just some small piece of, of a clinic. I'm not just a small piece of this Air Force Base. I'm a small piece on the entire thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, you don't know this until you're in. Like, recruiters will tell you, hey, yeah, this job does this. Yeah, you'll be fixing planes here. You'll be... You'll be a medic here. You'll be a <clears throat> defender at this base. And you don't realize, you think that everybody in the military is off deployed, fighting, healing, protecting, right. doing something, building, fixing. Mm-hmm. And that's not always the case. Sometimes you're stateside and people come back from deployment. Mm-hmm. And some people don't come back from deployment. Right. But we're all a part of this puzzle Mm -hmm. and without one person people feel it you know yeah small scale small scale you think about it like our clinic yeah someone calls in sick right we feel that absolutely (laughs) and that just goes all the way down the line like now we're seeing less patients now more people are sick like it just goes 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 and goes yeah and it's impossible for I, i i can't i can't fathom it when people are like oh like or the old way of thinking people would say like oh we're just a spoke on the wheel we're a cog on the in the machine right mm-hmm. people had that mindset because they felt so insignificant mm-hmm. because they're like if i'm not here working if i get out like the military is still going to roll the air force is still going to roll true but like everybody has a direct impact on the mission um, and, and you so cannot convince me absolutely absolutely everybody Nobody has a direct that. impact on the mission and it when you when you catch yourself in that mentality of I'm just a spoke on the wheel or am I insignificant amount of work that I put in does not matter or it right. won't, like taking a step back and thinking about the fact that yo we're a part of this mission mm-hmm. I may not be downrange taking bullets and giving them giving them out right but I'm a part of something great I'm a part of something special. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a huge benefit for sure. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Absolutely it is. Dang, this was great. I did not expect us to go this way. I didn't either, but that was a good <laughs> route. I like that. You want to do one of these and then call it? Let's do one of these and call it. <clears throat> All right, which one do you want to do? You want to do icebreaker deep or, or one of the deeper? Mm, rock, paper, scissors. If you win, you choose. If I win, I choose. Uh, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. I don't know what I just did. I <laughs> did <laughs> <laughs> just Right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. You win. So you get to choose. All right. Deeper. Deeper. Okay. All right. We're going deeper. <laughs> oh, no. oh man, I can't. We can't do that one because that's. <laughs> oh no. That one's kind of funny. We're gonna have to read that one later. <laughs> we'll have our call in. We'll have our call in. Answer that one. Oh gosh. Oh wow, those are. Uh... Those are intimate, man. Oh, really? <laughs> good lord. Oh, good lord. I ain't doing that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's do a deep one. <laughs> Let's flip them over. Let's pick one. I'm going to just read these just so you guys know what I, what I said no to. Because <laughs> Noah and I are not engaging in this kind of... No, absolutely uh, not. <laughs> What's your least favorite sex position? Oh, God. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing that one. If you could only do one sex position for the rest of your life, which would you? Which would it be? It's like, they are deeper questions. They are deeper questions, but I ain't talking to you about that, Noah. No, I'm, yeah, we're good. We're good. <laughs> we're, good. Like we're good. Love you, but not, you know. I love you, but not. <laughs> There's certain information that you just, you just don't, don't. That's don't hilarious. Talk. Man, what? Oh, would you choose? That one right there. Okay, here we go. Lose all the money you've earned this year or lose all the memories you've gained this year. Oh, man. Well, that's a good one. We can do this one even and that one instead. I think this one's a no-brainer. That one that you just asked. I think that... I would lose all the money that yeah. I made this year. Yeah, I feel like that's a no-brainer. <laughs> I lose all the money. I would lose it. Yeah, because I'll, I'll get it. You can get money back, but you, you can, can never get back a memory. Absolutely. I had some of the best memories 2022. Even now, like, some of the best. 
memory. Like my brother got married and we went to his wedding and we just we was in Wisconsin and we did like one day or we just did like a boys day. Yeah. And he put me I was his best man. Obviously. <laughs> you know you know what you're saying? But we're out his but his best friend, like one of his best friends was like we were kinda like co running it, yeah. like the whole thing. So we set up this whole day and it was just like one of the best nights of my life. Yeah. Like we didn't even do anything crazy. Like we we did do we did do crazy. But like <laughs> we got we found a because his buddy, his friend, lived in Wisconsin. So yeah. he kind of knew the lay of the land. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I, I can plan things. We can make this epic. So we got together all the boys. Mm-hmm. And we kidnapped my brother. Literally. We pulled him out of the room. Or we, I told him, I was like, hey, man. I went to his door. I was like, hey, man, come on down. We're going to go to the lobby. Yeah. All the boys were waiting, waiting for him at the entrance of the hotel that we were in. And he walked outside, and I was like, hey, let me hold your glasses real quick. Like, his fan, like nice little, like, shades and stuff. Let me hold those. Let me hold those. And grab them. Let me hold your backpack. Yeah. Me. I'll carry it for you. It's your day, man. They put a bag over his head, and we stuffed him in the back of a car. <laughs> we stuffed him <laughs> in the back of the car, and we made him chug a Mountain Dew. And um, we put, like, loud music. We played Bodies. You know that song? Let the Bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We put that on blast on his, on his headphones, so he had no idea. But a bag over his head. Made him chug a drink. Put the bag back over his head. Took him to like a amusement park. Had a great day. Went down to the lake. This we got a person that had a boat. Owned yeah. a boat like a big speedboat, like almost yeah. like a mini yacht. We got on. Mm. We got on that. We just drank the day to, the whole day away. Day drinking. Had a blast. Went to a couple bars. Rented a Airbnb and played COD Zombies Black Ops. Dude, Street. come on. Greatest. Day. Sounds like a great day. Great. Sounds like a blast. Like, we'll never forget that day. But yeah, no, that's a no-brainer. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, especially doing what we do. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that one? Last we question, go. and then we'll end the podcast. Last question, and we'll cut it. What is something you get competitive over? Go ahead. I know I don't look it, but I am skinny fat. <laughs> like, under this hoodie is a fat, <laughs> fat little man. <laughs> But I used to hoop. I used to play ball, and I get I get really competitive over anything involving basketball. Someone just has one thing to me on the court, and it's over. It's over. It is over. Mm-hmm. I still can shoot, though. I'm not as fast as I used to be. I'm not as quick, okay. but I will shoot the lights out. So I get I get super competitive over that. Over basketball, yeah, dude. I think this is like my worst and best quality. I get competitive over everything. Yeah. Like, there's not one thing that I'm more competitive over. Like, if there's a competition to be had... You're I'm having going, it. I'm going for the throat. Same. I, I like to compete. I, I enjoy competition. It's fun. I'm competitive to a unhealthy degree. <laughs> like, it, it could be something stupid. Yeah. Like, I was playing my wife in Mario Kart the other day, and it got to some serious shit talking. I was like, <laughs> let's go. You want to run it back? Let's go. I play 2K with my homies. If I'm losing, I'm the Oh, I'm a bad sport. You're a menace. I'm a menace. I'm like, bro, I'm not stopping until I beat you. Yeah. Competitive nature. It's just, I think that's like one of my greatest qualities and yeah. also my, one of my worst flaws. Yeah. Competitive over everything. Goddamn. I, yeah, if you got it in you, you got it in you, man. You got sometimes it in you, you, you. you, you'll compete over nothing. Like, I find myself at work sometimes, you know, if you're not on a resident schedule, you have 20 minute appointments. Right. And it's like, I'm competing. How fast can I type? Mm-hmm. <laughs> How fast can I get these? I want to get this patient to the provider before they're back at their before desk. they're back at their desk. I do. I'm I was. It. I noticed that today. I was like, I'm gonna beat Miss Petty. Yep. Like all day. That's my game. <laughs> if I'm at the clinic, I want them to be like, Oh, slow down. Slow down. Oh, I'm too good. You saying I'm too good? <laughs> all right. Bet. <It's> like, <laughs> if I can get the, this this patient checked in into the room, got their vitals set, I know their HPI, and oh. I can get it to oh. their get it to the provider's desk before they get back. I'm good. I'm good. That's I'm a win. Good. That's a win. Damn. Dude. Literally compete with everything. Hell yeah. Compete with myself. I gotta see if I can wake up at four in the morning to go work out. Ah. Can you get me in if I get there? Yeah, dude. Because uh, I don't have access. Can you get? Me, I can get in with you. I got you. What time are you gonna get there? We'll get there at five thirty. We'll work out for an hour. We'll sit in the sauna for twenty minutes, uh-huh. and we'll we'll have enough time to shower. Not together. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are multiple showers in that locker room. I'll be on one corner and you'll be in the other there's corner. No, bro. There's like rooms. Are oh, like there like little stalls? Yeah, they're like little oh. stalls. It's great. Say less. I'm going to pack a bag. Pack a bag, bro. I'll be there. Yeah. Sweet. 
we'll wake out in the morning? Um, Maybe I might not. I can't wake make up. a problem. Who knows? Because if you don't wake up and I get there and you don't get me in, I'm, I'm gonna come to your place and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna turn. I'm gonna take all the. I'll be there cushions. if you're there. Okay. Well, it's a longer drive for me. So if if you don't text get me when that, you wake up. If you don't, if you, if I go out there and I can't get in because you didn't get up. That's the thing about, like, having a workout partner, like, that's it. You hold each other accountable. You literally hold each other accountable. Like, I, the simple fact that I know. I have all, everything to lose. You have an hour to drive there. I have there. everything to lose. Everything to lose. If I just get up and you're like, yeah, okay, bro, I text you before it. Yeah, yeah, bro, I'm going to get up there. And then I get there and I'm like, hey, bro, where you at? Radio static? <laughs> oh, bro. Not going to happen. I, oh, Not going to happen. When I see you at work, your whole computer is going to be gone. I'm going to unplug everything. Dude, this guy plays the most pranks. Gosh, I was so pissed that one day. <laughs> oh, dude. We said we'd end the episode, but we... Yeah, this ahead. guy is... Yeah. <laughs> when he literally says that, he means it. Like, one day he came to my computer and he put a sticker under my mouse. <laughs> and, and I went to go put this patient information in my computer. And I'm literally like... My mouse is broken. My mouse is broken. I logged off that computer onto a different computer. And he was like, bro, all you had to do was remove the sticker. Your mouse was not broken. He put a sticker underneath my mouse and my mouse was not working. I was like, ah! I was so upset. He does stuff like that all the time. I took a picture of it. I'm going to put it right here so you can see. It was a Power Ranger sticker. It was pretty funny. He also made my mouse like a big pink thing. It filled up like my whole screen. Like this dude, bro, you have constantly seen... doing pranks. These are pranks because I like you. You don't want to see the pranks if I don't like you. <laughs> you don't mess with people you don't like. That's you true. know it. <laughs> well, that's true. You don't talk to people you don't like. That's true. But I'm saying like these pranks at these. This is level one. Level one trauma. Like, Here we go. If I didn't like you, it would be worse. I guess so. It could, all... it could always be worse. You're my guy though. I like you too. For sure. All, all right, guys. Right, we're signing out. Bam. All right, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Appreciate y'all again. 51 subscribers. Can't believe it. It's amazing. We love y'all. Uh, shout out uh, Sereno for subscribing today. Shout out Rodriguez for subscribing today. Um, yeah, y'all real ones, man. Yeah, I said I promised them I would call them out if I, if they subscribe. Yo, I wish you would really tell the analytics thing. <laughs> okay. Like, I'll tell that. Because it's then, hilarious. And then we'll sign out. <laughs> I, I, we, I talked about it, but the camera wasn't rolling. Oh, my God. Okay, so I looked at the analytics for our channel earlier today. And it kind of gives you, like, the basic synopsis. I almost ate my glasses. <laughs> oh, my God. That was crazy. But, no, um, so they gave you, like, who's subscribed, like, how many subscribers you've gained in the past 21 days, the number of views, the number of hours. But they also give you a statistic on, like, the percentage of your audience, like, where this they're is from. hilarious. So we're at 51 subscribers, and I, I'm getting deeper into the analytics, and we get this analytic that says 44% of your audience is from the United States. <laughs> Where are the other people from? This joker was like, where the hell everybody at? Where are they at, man? Like, what the hell? Like, who, we're global. You're telling we me are. half of our audience is not from America? Hey, are not Americans. We did talk a whole lot about you know being in the military and the Air Force, and we love America. Hundred percent. But hey, shout out to you guys. Thank you. Let us know wherever where you're, you're from. at. Wherever you're from. Forty-four percent. Forty-four percent. More than half of y'all are not even from the United States. Like that's yeah, crazy. That's yeah. awesome. Like we're not complaining. It was just it caught me off guard. It caught me off guard. It was a little surprising. Yeah. Thank you. But anyways, yeah, thank you everyone. Thank y'all so much for watching. Um, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe today. Please do it. Don't forget. Hit that subscribe button. It's free. Share it. Share, Share it. it. We're trying to get to 100. We're trying to get to 100. We had a, a little jump today, and it's like I'm a kid in the candy store. When I see it, we got even one more subscriber. I'm like, yeah. that's one more than yesterday. We're yeah. almost to our goal, and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep it rolling. We appreciate y'all so much for watching. Can't wait to see y'all in the next one. Peace. <laughs>